Hey, good morning everybody and welcome back to the channel. Start of a new year. Lots of solar projects to get into. Beautiful day, beautiful conditions. Welcome back everybody, happy new year. Let's get right into it. So I'll just start by saying I've lived off grid for just about 30 years, 15 years in the Colorado mountains, over 8,000 foot elevation, and the past 15 years here in Hawaii at about 1,200 foot elevation. So a big difference. And while I've always used photovoltaic solar panels for capturing power from the sun, it's the storage capacity that has changed in the past couple of years. For 28 of those 30 years, always used lead acid batteries. And here I have two of the last ones uh, in service out here. These are a couple of the old Trojan Motive. Those are 150 amp hours a piece tied together for a 300 amp hour bank, but only 150 amp hours really available with lead acid because you don't want to drop them below 50% without degrading them too much. So there is that limitation with lead acid. Before lithium iron phosphate came around, these were the gold standard. Uh, they're obsolete now. And this right here is the very first lithium iron phosphate battery I purchased from Chins almost two years ago. This was my introduction into lithium iron phosphate. Uh, I loved it so well upon installing it that I quickly added a second one to create a 600 amp hour bank. Those are two tied in parallel to double the amp hour capacity on a 12 volt system. So it's a very large 12 volt system, 600 amp hours, working well. And the reason to have switched over to this was to hook up a full size uh, refrigerator freezer and have since added another chest freezer. Things that I would have never considered when I was running lead acid especially back in the day when it took so many extra lead acid batteries and so many more solar panels to run a system large enough to run these type of appliances. And back then, all of the solar equipment was so much more expensive. It just wasn't uh, cost effective. So what we did is we always ran uh, a propane refrigerator, propane freezer, and the propane refrigerator was one third that size. It was a seven cubic foot, that's 21 cubic foot. So, and then that's a five cubic foot freezer. So the main reason, and at first when we switched over to uh, lithium iron phosphate here, was to put in an electric refrigerator freezer. That worked perfectly and we've been adding ever since. We've basically gotten off the propane except for cooking, which has drastically reduced our uh, usage of propane. These are the 40 pound, uh, about eight gallons, eight to nine gallons worth of propane in each tank. And when I was running a refrigerator, all of these years, decades, um, you know, these are a hassle. <clears throat> They're heavy running a refrigerator 24 seven. I was constantly hauling these in and out of some very rough roads. So wear and tear on the car, wear and tear on my body. It's been a huge, huge difference to, to get off the propane for refrigeration and freezing, uh, where the lithium just does fantastically on that. So now still do use a little propane for cooking and hot water heat, but one of these tanks used to last me uh, about two and a half to three weeks 
now by switching over one of these tanks lasts over three months. So right there is uh, six plus months worth of propane. So, you know, every few months now I, I run the empty one out and fill it out a lot easier than every couple of weeks having to switch those out. The other big difference is back on the lead acid battery days, we just shied away from anything with a heating element. So an electric coffee pot, we didn't even consider it. Uh, they just were too big of a draw on the system. Uh, nowadays with the lithium, it's no problem with heating elements. You don't have to build your system up, you know, to any huge size to do that. Lithium can handle the discharge without any degradation. And it's just a, that's a huge game changer too. So don't worry about any thing with a heating element now, as long as we stay within the specifications of the uh, inverters and charge controllers and whatnot. But uh, this is a new thing in the past couple of years. We would have never used one of these before. We just used the old, you know, uh, boil your water and pour it over your coffee. Same thing on running a hot plate, like one of these induction uh, cooktops here. Never would have done that. Even in the low setting, this thing pulls 600 watts. And on full, it's over a thousand. So that's just something we would have never considered on the lead acid days, where now, don't even give it a second thought if we want to use this instead of the uh, propane uh, oven and stove, we, we can do that. And I've been running a lot of experiments showing you guys just how effective these lithium iron phosphate batteries are. Here's a, a, a 48 volt, 90 amp hour uh, server rack style battery from Power Queen. We tied this up a few months ago. I'm getting ready to give it to a, a real permanent uh, location. I don't like the way I've got this cable coming down here. It's just the way it would fit. It works fine. But I want to turn it around and, and put it in a more permanent location. And after running it for a few months, I can say that, it, you know, it's working fantastically. And we've got that 48 volt battery tied into a 3000 watt uh, pure sine wave inverter, 48 volt. And we're using that to run this chest freezer just by itself. I could run a lot more. It's got 700 watts of, of solar tied into that uh, one battery, one battery, and it's keeping five cubic feet of food completely hard and frozen. So that just gives you a little bit of an example of what it could do. I could actually, with a little bit more solar, I can possibly double the solar on that, and that one battery will run both the refrigerator and the freezer. These are things we would have never been able to do with lead acid. And comparatively speaking, these two uh, lead acids right here, they're about 80 pounds a piece, so together you got 160 pounds uh, for this same capacity. In lithium, you're looking at about 30 pounds. And no maintenance like these require, of course, the watering and, and cleaning up of the terminals, which I see there's another one that is definitely in need of some scrubbing. So those things you don't have to do with lithium. I don't miss uh, the servicing of the lead acid at all. And here, referring back to those Chins batteries that I showed you, there we've got 1,000 watts tied into that 600 amp hour bank. I could add a lot more. The other great thing about lithium iron phosphate is how fast they charge up and how slowly they discharge. So I could add, those are uh, 100 watt panels, two different strings tied in series for uh, a 500 watt string on the bottom and a 500 watt string on the top. Going into two separate charge controllers, which get those uh, 600 amp hours uh, up to pretty good charge most days. I may at some point even throw another 500 watts up there because it can handle it. But so far, and with the days being the short days of the year here, I'm doing fine to where I can just leave that alone. 
and concentrate on some other systems that I've been working on. And here's another uh, array that I'm using. This is actually uh, supplying power to two separate systems, both tied in with lithium iron phosphate. Got 500 watts on the top string and 700 watts on this bottom string. That way I, I am supplying a kind of reserve and extra charging station that I can charge some extra batteries around here. So if I do run into some, uh, you know, really, really dark days and I start dragging any system down, I've got some spares I can slip into place, never miss a beat. So yeah, that lithium iron phosphate, besides just being uh, so affordable these days, I mean, those batteries just a couple of years ago when I was looking into them, they were, you know, $1,000. Uh, now I'm seeing them under $300, which is just absolutely amazing. Yeah, it's a beautiful day today. We're gonna get pretty good charge. And the other thing I did when I switched over to lithium iron phosphate, I uh, instead of using the old pulse width modulators uh, for charging with your ch as a charge controller on the lead acid, switched over to MPPT, uh, and I'm switching over to all Victron charge controllers. I still have one EP ever in the mix that's coming out pretty quick, and I'm just going to be running all Victron. These are super fast uh, charge controllers, super accurate, and they're just plug and play and makes it so easy. I really don't have to pay attention to it too close. And here's the last EP ever that I mentioned that I've got into production right now. It's gonna be coming out pretty quick. I've got another Victron that I'm gonna tie. This is on one of those strings feeding the Chins battery bank. Uh, this was my first introduction into working with MPP it was quite a bit different than using the old PWM type charge controllers. I've in general been very happy with this, but I have found that there is a difference between them and the Victron. So I am going to uh, replace this with a Victron, which I already have one on this system. And I'm going to just tie the other one in right here. That's coming up in just a couple of days. I've got everything I need to do that. And then I can have two of those side by side talking to each other. So yeah, the biggest difference for me in how uh, lithium iron phosphate has changed uh, the off-grid lifestyle is being able to run some just more modern appliances, you know, refrigerator, freezer, free, an extra freezer for extra food security. Uh, it's, it's just kind of a no-brainer and with the, the, the price and the way that they uh, last. I mean, the longevity of these things, if you take care of them, they're going to last for so many years beyond what lead acid was able to do without the fuss or muss. So the last things I'll just say about that is uh, the lithium, especially combined with those Victron charge controllers, just makes these systems basically plug and play these days. You really just don't have to worry about it too much. Once you get it all configured, everything just works perfectly. Uh, you get down to that 50% discharge. You don't have to start turning things off like we used to in the old days of trying to stretch out the lifespan of a lead acid battery. You know, you can take them down if you need to. And you're not gonna hurt that battery any, so. Yeah, those are all the things how lithium has changed uh, the off-grid lifestyle out here. It's made it easier, a little more modern. You know, of course, we've got to have all the things that a normal house has now. And you're your own power supply. Pretty good combination. All right, food for thought for the new year, you guys. Aloha.